Hello and full person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a somewhat unexpected discovery coming out of Greenland, the largest island on planet Earth that you see right there, that part with all of the ice on the surface. And so in this video we're actually going to discuss a recent study that presents us with a bit of a, I guess, plot twist. Turns out that Greenland used to be Greenland after all, and in somewhat recent geological times. But more specifically, the scientists found signs of what seems to be plants, insect parts, fungi fossils and a bunch of other stuff that absolutely everybody missed until recently and that presents us with this somewhat unusual evidence for the complexity of ice sheets on Greenland and the evidence that these ice sheets are definitely not permanent. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but first just a few basic facts about Greenland and about all of these studies where these samples came from. So as you can see from this particular simulation, unlike the name, Greenland is definitely not green. It's very, very white. All of this is a result of one of the largest ice sheets on the planet. And as a result of this, not a lot of people obviously live in Greenland, making Greenland one of the least populated areas on the entire planet. But as the legend goes, it's named Greenland because back in the days, one of the Vikings, Eric the Red, supposedly named it so just because he hoped the name would attract more settlers. So I guess it was a kind of a medieval bait and switch. But from what we know about Greenland based on various geological records, even in the last thousand years or so, its climate potentially changed quite a lot. As a matter of fact, between 800 and 1300 AD, it might have had a relatively mild climate, possibly even several degrees Celsius warmer than most of the North Atlantic with possible signs of trees, various types of plants, and a lot of opportunities for livestock to graze. But a lot of these discoveries, and pretty much a lot of the science, comes from the analysis of ice cores from Greenland. And a lot of these ice cores were collected during the project known as GISP, Greenland Ice Sheet Project, that began back in 1971 and continued for several decades in at least three separate locations. In the process collecting a lot of different ice cores, using different techniques from several different locations and from several different depths. Here's a picture of a cross-section of one of these ice cores from approximately 1800 meters in depth and even here you can clearly see annual layers that have been deposited here for thousands and even millions of years. And so many of these layers basically show us that the climate on Greenland did actually change quite a lot in the last 100,000 years. Specifically it had a lot of dramatic temperature shifts that potentially influenced the rest of the North Atlantic. And so for many years now, a lot of different agencies have been studying this ice sheet, trying to essentially understand the climate of our planet by studying individual layers inside of it. And the thing is, it's always been assumed that this has been with us for possibly at least 2.6 million years, as in the ice sheet very likely formed approximately 2.5 million years ago and unlikely to have changed a lot ever since. And this to some extent has been actually confirmed by various scans and by retrieving a lot of different ice cores from a lot of different locations. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons we know this ice sheet very likely existed for a very long time is because of the unusual depression it formed in the middle. This ice sheet is so huge and so heavy that the weight of the ice sheet depressed the central area so much that it's now lying 300 meters or 1000 feet below the sea level. Whereas on the outskirts, very close to the coast, there is a sudden rise in elevation making the rest of the coast kind of stick out. And here the ice flow is generally from the center to the coast. Basically suggesting that right in the center you're going to find some of the oldest ice on this entire island. And it's obviously been assumed previously that somewhere in the center here we can actually find ice that's approximately 2.6 million years old that potentially existed since the early Pleistocene, when the ice ages on the planet just began. And so right there, the location you see listed as GISP2, this is essentially the center where the samples were collected back in 1993. And back then this was also one of the deepest such drills, with the samples basically going all the way down to the till or the mixed sediment on the bottom of this, and even collecting a bit of that as well. And so all of these recent discoveries actually come from this location and also from the older location known as Camp Century. And Camp Century was actually the first attempt to extract any core, where back in 1960s, Army Corps engineers from the United States essentially studied a lot of the ice collected here 
for slightly different reasons. This was actually an unusual attempt by the United States to construct a nuclear-powered base right in the middle of the ice in Greenland, whose main purpose was to test a viability of a kind of a mobile base basically powered by tiny nuclear reactors that could be transported by trucks to any location. You can read about this part of history in one of the articles in the description, but in essence it didn't work and resulted in a lot of contamination and eventually Denmark finding out, because apparently all of this was secret, and getting just a little bit upset about this. But the point is that here they collected a lot of ice cores in order to study the viability of this base and to figure out if these nuclear reactors were affecting any of the ice. But then these ice cores were left in storage for basically several decades. And it wasn't until 2019 that these cores were once again examined after they were extracted from this abandoned military base. And so in 2019, when these samples were looked at, the scientists were actually kind of shocked to discover that it seemed to contain potential sediments of leaves and moss that possibly existed here 416,000 years ago. And this was obviously a somewhat controversial discovery, but it was not the only such discovery coming from various teams. Back in 2016, this study hinted that some of the other cores from the bedrock in a different location was potentially no more than 1.1 million years old, suggesting that the entire ice sheet could not be 2.6 million years old as previously assumed. And this was of course very controversial because for a very long time scientists believed that Greenland had this unchanging ice sheet for at least 2.5 million years. And so as a result the scientists behind this recent study wanted to see if they can actually find other clues in some of the oldest deposits right in the middle of Greenland. And so here Paul Bierman and Haley Mastro, whose names I probably mispronounced as always, decided to take a look at those 1993 cores to possibly look for something similar. Or to basically discover other samples, other fossils, something else to confirm that the ice here was much younger. But once again here, instead of focusing on the ice or the rocks below the ice, they focused on those deposits known as till. And here the discovery was really shocking. Within approximately 3 inches of soil, they discovered everything from wood leftovers, various spores, various fungi, different types of moss, different types of seeds, and even some kind of a compound eye of some sort of an insect. All discovered in that somewhat old core from 1993, in a location that you see right here. And surprisingly, nobody even noticed these samples up until now. Apparently, for the past three decades, they were stored in a Colorado storage facility, and until now, nobody bothered to check what's inside this till. Here's actually some of the samples they were able to recover, showing us the variety of life that existed in this location. This is a seed from a typical arctic poppy flower, different types of spores from different types of moss, clear signs of wood from possibly arctic willow, and more moss, more seeds, and so on. As a matter of fact, another core from a location known as Dye 3 even contained DNA that was very likely less than a million years old. This was reported back in 2007. And so here, along with several other studies, we now have direct evidence that Greenland during several periods was basically completely ice-free, with a lot of these samples suggesting that this possibly came from approximately 1 million years ago. And the model in this study suggests that the only way for these samples to even exist here is basically for Greenland to be completely ice-free, implying that it potentially had some kind of a tundra-like climate with quite a lot of trees, quite a lot of vegetation, and basically everything else we expect from a tundra. This ice does not seem to be permanent and seems to be much more dynamic, potentially driven by climate effects we still don't really understand. But obviously in the last few decades, most of these studies are mostly studying these ice formations to understand the human impact. And the signs here are also pretty clear. For the past decade, during several periods, Greenland has experienced a lot of massive melting events. Essentially the events when the entire surface would mostly be melting and not really accumulating new ice. And so for the past decade, the melting ice on Greenland has been basically adding approximately 0.7 millimeters per year of global ocean levels. Now obviously this doesn't sound like a lot and it will take hundreds or actually more like thousands of years for all of this ice to melt, raising the total sea levels by about 7.4 meters or 24 feet. But the point is that well, first of all, it's melting, and second of all, this study and a lot of other studies basically confirm that it's melted many times before and is definitely not as stable as we always believed. With the new question being, but what actually caused it to melt before? And this is where right now we have no answer. The only thing that's clear is that Greenland 
is definitely going to be changing, although possibly not within our lifetimes, and Greenland will potentially become green after all within the next thousand years. And right now what we're witnessing is basically the beginning of its melt. And here I actually wanted to connect this video to another one from just a few years ago. There was another discovery by NASA on Greenland that made the news a few years back. These same studies that were studying Greenland and its ice also discovered at least two huge craters. Craters that were very likely formed within the last three million years, but craters whose exact origins are currently unknown. And so I guess here my personal question would be, okay, could this be maybe somehow related? Could these craters have been responsible for all of this melt? And if so, what other effects did all of this have? And so right now there are quite a lot of interesting discoveries from Greenland, but no exact conclusive evidence just yet. But once we have some answers, or even more evidence, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out previous videos about those craters in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.